What's uh, Boston College doing better now than maybe they were doing early in the season? You know, I think they just they have a lot of young players, and so I think those young players have just acclimated better to to this level. Number one, I think they're defending a little bit better, um, and certainly they're executing their offense very well. They they run some unique things. Uh, coach Christian is a really good offensive coach. He, he does some things that are a little bit outside the box. Uh, I think he really helps Eli Carter, uh, you know, get creative shots. And he's uh, certainly a fifth-year senior, outstanding scorer. He and Dennis Clifford are their two older players. Uh, but I think defensively, I think the game has probably slowed down a little bit for a lot of their younger guys. And so they're making a few more shots. Certainly the way they played against North Carolina the other night, they had every chance to win the game. Probably should have they had a seven-point lead with you know five and a half to go, and then Carolina rallied. But, um, they're playing much better than they were, um, and I, you know, uh, expect them to play well tomorrow. Two years ago, you were in a similar spot where you just kind of got to win each game to get to that NCAA tournament. What's different about this team that you're going to be able to get to that? Four yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, I think that's true of most. I mean, that's what you're. What's true of most teams, and what you want from most teams is to be in this position with a couple of weeks left, and you're. Um, you know, have the opportunity to go to the tournament. And you're trying to play your way in. I mean, there's a few, there's a handful of teams that already know for sure they're in, but there's there's probably 50 of us that are, you know, in a situation where it's kind of how we play the last two to three weeks of the season. Um, you know, I, I hope our team just executes and plays well. I mean, I think we, uh, you know, we're a little more dynamic offensively than some of the teams we've had here. Uh, have a few more weapons, so maybe that helps us. You know, experience is not a factor. We, we have older players. We have guys that have been through the wars of the league. And and uh, so we're not going to be wide-eyed about any of that. Um, you know, it's still really hard to win games on the road. Um, and so that'll be very challenging for us here down the stretch with several road games left. Um, and then, you know, we're going to have to continue to shoot the ball and, and uh, make our free throws and to win close games, which is, is what a lot of this boils down to. A lot of two and three possession games where you just got to find a way to win them. You, you don't coach these guys any differently than one game at a time, but do you recognize the importance of trying to string together? Like yeah, absolutely. Stream. Momentum momentum this time of year is critical in terms of trying to be in a uh, positive frame of mind and, and uh, feeling good about yourself as you approach each game. Um, you know, that's one of the things that's hard about the league is it's hard to string a lot of consecutive wins together because there's so many good teams um, and there's so much depth. Uh, I think there's more depth this year than maybe even most of the other years that I've been here. Um, there's just, you know, the teams that some of the teams that are in the bottom of the league still have very good RPIs, and, you know, much better non-conference records than we had. And uh, so there's certainly talent at, at every roster. Um, and you got to go win games. you got to play well. Uh, and I've said you can play well and lose. That certainly is the case. It's hard to play poorly and win. You don't really do that anymore. I mean, you know, it's. I was really pleased with our game against uh, Georgia Tech because I thought we defended at a very high level. Uh, we rebounded well, created stops, created turnovers. You know, we didn't shoot the ball well. Um, our post guys played well offensively, and uh, we only turned the ball over six times. So we did a lot of good things in the game, even though aesthetically it wasn't maybe as pleasing. Um, you know, in terms of making shots. Uh, but we did a lot of good things on the offensive end to create shots. And then defensively, we were very tough and we executed a, a, a game plan very well. This time of year, is, it, is that kind of the thing to see that your defense get better like that at this time of year? Well, you know, you just want it to be consistent. I mean, guys know what to do in most situations, but it's executing it. It's finishing off possession with rebounds. It's, you know, it's going in and, and executing a game plan. Uh, sometimes that game plan changes, certainly. Uh, based on other teams' personnel, but uh, you know, I, you're just trying to watch your guys play at a high level on both ends, and I think that's what it takes if you're going to win consecutive games in this league. Uh, you know, uh, at the finish. From a coaching perspective, how would you characterize you know what you're preaching to these guys, given the sense of urgency that can creep in at this point? I, I'm just very honest with our players. Uh, you know, I think that's how you need to be with these guys. They they get away from you and they're on social media and they, they watch TV, they know what's going on. So I think you need to address the situation in terms of, you know, where your team stands. You know, don't put your head in the sand and not talk about being on the bubble and all those kinds of things. It's not something we we live by because we know that uh, at the end of the day, we just do the best we can that day. Uh, 
attack the day a little bit, if you will, and then try to put ourselves in a position to be prepared for when it's time to play, and then go try to play with a free mind and uh, you know be loose, have fun, compete, um, and not worry so much about uh, results, and just try to continue to work to play better basketball. That's something we talk about a lot: is just continuing to try to play better basketball. And uh, if we do that, good things will happen. This has nothing to do with Boston College, but does Duran deserve to be in that ACC Player of the Year conversation? Uh, well, I think some of that will depend on where we finish. You know, I think I'm a big believer in guys, you know, um, leading their teams. And certainly the more games we win, the better his chances of, you know, being a player of the year of all ACC first team. I certainly think he's had those kind of – that kind of season. I think he's had those kind of numbers. Um, I think consistently he's produced at a high level. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of him because he's shown unbelievable improvement in all his numbers. And, and uh, you know, he's a guy that's at the top of our scouting report every every time teams play us. And, and he's been able to go out and, and play very well uh, on almost every occasion. And, you know, that's what that's what great players do. That's what KJ did for us, uh, you know, his junior year. And he was recognized as an all-ACC player. And, and, you know, we're certainly optimistic that that'll be the same for uh, Jerron. I know you don't like to compare guys, but how different is his junior year compared to KJ? You know, there's not a lot. I, I, I'm not very good at going back and remembering exactly all the games and all the things they did. They're different players a little bit. KJ was a little more dynamic athletically. Um, I think Jerron has been consistently probably a little bit better score um, and has really improved his shooting to where he probably shot the ball a little bit better than KJ. Um, but both guys were really smart about playing to their strengths. Um, I think we did some good things to help both guys uh, by putting them in positions to be successful. And then the similarity is really the two guys that are very athletic and competitive, and uh, they work really hard at their craft. And uh, their development is readily seen from year one to year three. And uh, you know, it's it's been really fun as a coach to watch that kind of development because you know how hard the guys work at it. Avery's been kind of uh, inconsistent offensively. Is that just a mental thing? And what can you do to try to get more consistency out of him? Well, yeah, a little bit. I mean, he certainly sometimes gets in his own way. I think he's, you know, he's a guy that really wants to do well. I think his defense has been excellent this year. I think he's a guy that really helps us in a lot of ways in games with his competitive fight and the way he defends. Um, shooting has been a little bit up and down, and I'm, you know, not 100% sure why that is. I think by and large, most of the time he takes good shots. There's usually only one, about one shot a game that I'm a little, you know, uneasy about. Um, but he also, you know, it's 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 a little bit the time of year with the way he plays. Um, I think there's been some fatigue at times. You know, he has had a little bit of a groin injury as well, and so I think there are some times that you know that tightens up on him, and and uh, he's dealing with a lot of different things. Um, so, you know, he he's just got to relax and stay loose and be comfortable. He knows we want him to shoot. And, we have a lot of confidence in him and um, think that there certainly have been some games where he's really shot the ball well and that's really helped us. So, um, you know, hopefully moving forward he'll continue to do that.